Hello, welcome to the show. This week we have for you a bunch of world travelers that are taking the very, very long way around. But first, something a little bit old fashioned, namely Harry Fisher. We test an awful lot of bikes here on The Bike Show and all of them are brilliant at what they're meant to do. A sports tourer is sporty and comfortable for long distances. A superbike is insanely fast and a cruiser is huge and gaudy. However, there is one type of bike which is becoming more and more popular despite telling the biggest lie in motorcycling. The Bonneville-based Triumph Scrambler has been around for a good few years now, but this one is all new for 2017. New frame, seats, wheels, handlebars, and a 900cc eight-valve parallel twin engine that you'll find in the Street Twin and Street Cup, but with a slightly different tune. It harks back to an era when off-roaders, MX, Enduro, call them what you will, as we know them today, just didn't exist. An off-road bike was a road machine that had been modified to tackle dirt, as opposed to a bike that had been designed with the sole purpose of being ridden off-road. So, is the modern breed of Scrambler a bit of a plaything, style over substance, or are they serious motorcycles? can't ignore the elephant in the room anymore. This is the Triumph Street Scrambler. But it's not a scrambler, is it? Oh yes, it looks like a scrambler. Well, maybe a scrambler from the 1960s, but it's not a scrambler. There's nobody in their right mind really gonna take this off-road, which is fine. It's a styling exercise, and as such, it is very successful. It is a fantastic looking machine. With this aftermarket Vance and Heinz pipe, it sounds brilliant, and to be honest, for the urban jungle, if we want to use that hackneyed old phrase, it is absolutely perfect. Super low centre of gravity, soft supple suspension, punchy little engine, great handling, you can flick it around through the curves perfectly, nice wide bars give you plenty of leverage. It is possibly the most comfortable seat I've ever sat on. Foot pegs positioning great, what more can you want? This is a fantastic little bike. Yes, of course it could go off-road. A Ducati Panigale could go off-road if you put knobbly tyres on it, but it doesn't mean it would be any good at it. Ground clearance on the Street Scrambler is too low. The suspension has too little travel and is set up for road use and therefore not compliant enough for the rust stuff. Not only that, but there is no protection as standard and it's just too pretty to encourage throwing it at the scenery. OK, that all sounds pretty negative, but it's really not meant to be. I absolutely love this street scrambler. It's brilliant as an urban tool. It looks fabulous, sounds great, and with its low centre of gravity, handles like a dream. The rear shocks feel a little soft, but that only goes to help with soaking up the urban bumps. So often we go on about a bike's fitness for purpose. Does it do what it says on the tin? And no, this bike is not a scrambler. It doesn't do that, as we've already touched upon. But what it does do is give you an absolute grin from ear to ear whenever you swing a leg over it. It's just fun. It's just like they've injected a bit of Mickey Mouse into its, G its DNA. It just, it just makes you smile. And it does encourage you, I'm afraid, to be a bit of a hooligan on the roads, which is absolutely, whoops, no problem by me. It's not a fast motorbike, but it's a not fast motorbike that encourages you to ride it as fast as it will go absolutely everywhere. We need to stop being obsessed with the idea that calling a bike a scrambler means that it has to go off road. Just as we get rid of the notion that a cafe racer is that, a racer. 
These roles have been taken over by sports bikes and adventure bikes, leaving us to enjoy style for style's sake. The new breed of retro bikes are an aesthetic and none the worse for that. Who says we can't have a bit of style in our lives? I have to admit that when the Bonneville range first came out back in the early 2000s, I wasn't that impressed. They were a bit vulgar, a bit gaudy. I just thought they were in quite bad taste because you have to remember that back in the early 2000s, we weren't that far away from the bad old days of the old T140 Triumph, which were just clunky old bikes, really. And I thought that to recall their, their spirit and their essence wasn't the best idea. But time has proven me wrong. And more importantly, I've come to love them just as much as any of the other Triumphs in the range. The Triumph Street Scrambler is a brilliant urban tool. You just know you look good on it, and that when you park it and walk away, you can look back at it and think, yeah, that's a really cool bike. And here it is. Very pretty it is too, I must say. It is. Let me put you on the spot straight away. Go on. How many out of ten? A good eight. Really? Yeah. It, look, it's, it's not a scrambler. But it's a lovely little bike. It's, it's, it's a it nice little... It depends on your definition of a scrambler. South Africa is different to Europe. Oh, here we go. These are going off again on a yes, tangent. It's all right. We've already covered this. Yes. Uh, scrambler is... These bikes are about the look and the feel. It's an they? They're not about... Yes, it's, it's yeah, you can buy a proper off-road bike. You can buy an on-road bike that goes off-road these days. It's, but it's, that's just a okay, styling exercise. Uh, eight out of ten, that's a very good uh, score, but... Down to the nitty gritty, how much is the little beauty? 139,500. Okay, but I happen to know that Triumph South Africa are uh, very fond of throwing lots of the Triumph catalogue at this bike. So <coughs> let me guess, the Vance and Hines pipe, that's not standard. No. How much is that? 13,500. 13,500. Just for the end pipe. Yeah. I see that there's also a guard for the headlight. Yes, that is about 1,000 Rand. Is it indeed? Yes. Right, and uh, what else have we got? How about the engine uh, protection bars? Are they standard? Two and a half thousand rand. Two and a half thousand. Yes. And the bash plate? Uh, that's standard. Oh, that's it. That's yes. good of them. It's plastic. So, uh, but it's standard. so we haven't got much on there. Oh, and don't forget the indicators, the LED indicators. Oh, yeah, they're quite neat. How much are they? standard, like one wheel or something. Exactly. Uh, indicators are one and a half thousand a pair. So it's about three grand foot indicators on it. But it already had indicators. It did, it, like, yes. Right. So you're looking at, as that stands there now, it's about 160,000 Rand. OK, so I was, you've just blown everything I was about to say out of the water. I was going to say it's very affordable and it's... Uh, well, it, it is, it's, as it's standard. Yeah but, but, yeah, but it's coming in... OK, well, let's go to the competitors. OK. Two obvious <clears throat> ones, Ducati Scrambler. Yes. And the BMW R9T Scrambler. Correct. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Tell me something. OK, this compared to the Ducati Scrambler, this is a 900cc twin liquid cooler, is yes. that right? Yes. How much horsepower does it make? 55 brake horsepower. And the Ducati is a... 800cc air-cooled air twin. How much horsepower does that make? <clears throat> anyway, thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> no, really. Come okay, on, it is 75 brake horsepower, but yeah. this has more torque. So? Okay, no, so that's all right. Talky, yeah. kind yeah. of road riding, relaxing, yeah. scrambling, you know, in not in the scrambling sense that you yeah. understand. Yes. Combat. Okay, but it's a lot less than the uh, BMW as well, isn't it? Well, the, the BMW Scrambler, as BMW South Africa brings it in, is about 190,000. Yes, right. but that has got the whole catalogue. Everything thrown at it, yes. So, so if you did mix and match, actually, so, well, how much is the Ducati? 129 for the base icon, is it? Yes. Something? Yeah, about 129. And I mean, they've got an extensive catalogue. Massive, yes. Look, yes. the, the catalogue for this is 150 items you can pin to this thing if you want to, which will probably take it well over 200,000 if you really wanted to. So, look, I'm trying to sum up now. It's, it's in the ballpark yes. with both of them. It's just that the BMW has had every bit of the catalogue shoved on the bike. As it comes in here, yes. OK. Which would you have of all three? Triumph. Would you really? I just love the looks of it. I, I think that looks spectacular. Got to admit, it does look good. It looks fantastic. Which would you have of all those three? I don't actually know. That's because it you're doesn't... a useless journalist. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have the R90 Scrambler. I really would. I think it's got character, it's but got It's got looks. a lot of engine. It's got a lot of engine. I it mean, has. You can and literally see lots of engine yeah. coming out I just it. wish BMW would stop faffing around and give us the more basic, cheaper one. Mm. Then we'd have 150 grand BMW scramble. Exactly, it'd be more in the ballpark. So, we've decided that all three are brilliant and uh, we can't make a mind up. <laughs> 
So go and have a look at his triumph. <laughs> and on that really conclusive note, we'll be back after this break. <laughs>